So this is the program of shared members. Here we have created one form. Now this form we are having the name which is form 1. And here we have changed the text which is Ankit Varma. Then here we have dragged and dropped one label that is label 1. Then again one more label we have dragged and dropped that is label 2. Then we dragged and dropped one button. This is button 1. We change the text of the button that is click. Afterward, we double click on this button, then this code will open. Here we are having public class form 1. So for this form 1, one class is created. Now it is ending with the end class. Afterward, the code of button will be automatically created by the .NET. This is the button 1 code. Because whenever we click on this button, this code will be executed. So here private, private because it is the part of form, sub means no return type and it is ending with the end sub. Here we are having is button underscore click that is the name of this procedure. Then afterward two parameters are passed. One is this one and second one is this. It is going to handle the button one dot click. So whenever we click on this button, this code will be executed. Above that, we have created a class. This is class name Ankit. Class is the user defined data type. It is ending with the end class. So this complete boundaries of the class. Everything inside that belong to the class. We know that the class is the combination of data members and the member function. So first of all, we have created one public shared. Now shared stands for this is the shared and here we are having s as integer so this is the shared variable whenever the shared keyword is used before the variable declaration that is called the shared variable here now s is the shared variable which is declared now afterward we can see that there is sub new we know that new stands for constructor Whenever we find the new keyword with the brackets, so we assume that this is the constructor. It is ending with the end sub. So this portion is completely the constructor. Now afterward, we can see that there is sub area. Sub means void, means no return type. Area is a function. Now here before that we have used shared keyword. That means this is the shared method. So this is the shared method and it is also having the argument because here we can see that by val r as integer. So one argument is passed and it is ending with the n sub. So this is one procedure or the method of shared type. I am representing this method with the m. Now if you talk about the second block here, here we are having sub. Sub means void, means no return type. Area. Now we can see that area word we have used two times. That means this is the exact example of overloading because one word we are using multiple forms that is the overloading. So here area is overloading and we know that this area is a method. Now this is called the method overloading and before that we are using the word which is shared. So this is again the shared method. So this is showing the example of shared method overloading means shared method can also be overloaded. Now earlier we have passed only one argument. Now here we are passing the two arguments. So this is one L and one is B. Both are of integer type. So these are the two argument passed. Now this is ending with the end sub. So here this is one more method of shared type. So two methods we have created of shared because the shared keyword is used before that. Now we are going to see that how this program will work when we start this project. When we click on the button, then afterward the code will run for the button. Then afterward we can see that dim obj1 as new Ankit. Now this Ankit is the name of class. So this class object is created. Why this is object? Because we have used the word new. So new signify this is the object. So class Ankit object is created. This is the object one. We know that whenever the object is created at the time constructor is called. 
So here we are having the constructor which is called which is sub new. Now here it is saying that s is equal to s plus 1. We know that whenever a variable is declared in the dot net, the value automatically is 0. So s is equal to s plus 1 means the value of s is now 1. So this constructor is called when the object is created. Now afterward go to the next line, dim obj2 as new ankit. Now that means it is again one more object is created. So the class ankit is having one more object. This is obj2. Whenever the object is created, the constructor is called and here we are having one constructor. So this constructor is called again sub new. This is constructor s is equal to s plus 1. The earlier value of s is 1. Why this value of 1 is taken? We know that every object of the shared variable have the same value. So this shared variable s value is accessible to all the objects because this is the shared variable. Now here this one is incremented with the two. If this was the instance variable then value will be zero for everyone. Everybody can have different values for the instance variable. Because s is the shared variable that's why every object is having the access to this shared variable and any object is modifying its value is visible to all the objects. So that's why this value of s is now modified from 1 to 2. Now again in the next line dim obj3 as new ankit that means one more object is created. So this class is having one more object which is object 3. When the object is created the constructor is called and in this constructor we are having sub new s is equal to s plus 1. It is a shared variable. So the previous value is accessible here also. So 2 plus 1 is 3. So now this is value 3. Now afterward going to the next line. Message box. So one message box is printed. Ankit. This is the name of class dot s. So this is the variable. And we know that the variable value is 3. So this 3 value is displayed. The value of s is 3 because 3 objects was called. And three objects just called the constructors and because the variable is shared that's why the value is incremented by all the objects. So here the value is 3. Now afterward it is going to the next line Anke this is the name of class dot area 10. Whenever we are calling one parameter we know that there is one method which is having one parameter by val r as integer. So here this 10 is given to r. So this value 10 is given to the r. Now dim a as integer. So one variable a is declared. a is equal to r into r. That means it is 10 into 10. Now afterward form 1 dot label 1 dot text. So inside this form we are having label 1. So this label 1 is now modified to area of square. So we are having the resultant window which is area of square that is a. We know that 10 into 10 is nothing but 100. So 100 is displayed here. After it is going back to the next line Anke. This is the name of class dot area. So again the area function will be called 20, 30. Now two parameters are there. So two parameters means this is the example of overloading. We know that. And here two parameters means now the second type of function will be called where we are having the two parameters. Now the value 20 and 30 will be given to L and B. So they are having the value 20, 30. Dim A as integer. So one variable A is declared. A is equal to length into breadth. So here 20 into 30. So there we know that that is nothing but the 600. So form 1 dot label 2 dot text. So in the form 1 label 2 text is modified to area of rectangle. So here we are having the output window area of rectangle. Now concat with A. Now A we know that is 600. So 600 is now displayed here. So this is how we have modified the label 1 and 2. And here we have learned that if we are using the shared keyword before the variable they are called the shared variable and before the method then they are called the shared method. And shared methods can be overloaded also. So that is all about the shared members.